Hi everyone! This coloring again will be from book by Emily Linde Hallberg, Sagar Oxagner, and I think that Sagar Oxagner will be my book of the month. Currently, I color fourth picture from it, and I am not sure that I will stop on the fourth picture. Anyway, today I decided to have some fun and to color one page with ten different mediums. This storm lady never was my favorite in the book. For me, picture is a little bit gloomy, but I decided that it will be perfect for some experiments. First, I decided to do stormy sky. I will be combining neo colors. I selected night blue, paints gray, charcoal gray and light gray and a little bit of watercolors. When I color storm sky, I love to combine some cold colors, so I selected night blue, paints gray and light gray, and I also added one warm gray color, which is charcoal gray. It's quite close to black. But to add some intensity to the background, I also will be adding a watercolor paints gray. Paints gray is one of my favorite watercolor paints. Some manufacturers make it closer to the simple cold gray color, but some manufacturers make it with distinctive bluish tint into gray, and that's my choice. I have nice uh, paints gray watercolors from Ukrainian manufacturer Rosa, from a Russian brand White Knights, and from Dutch manufacturer Van Gogh by Royal Talents. I put night blue color mostly in the upper part of the background of the sky, and closer to the lower part I mix different shades of grey. When I will be adding water, I also will be mixing my watercolors into neocolor pigment. It's difficult to explain why sometimes I love to add watercolors to neocolors. Maybe because I need some intensity to the colors, maybe because in this way I can get on the background some more transparent areas, which I can get with transparent pigment of watercolors and some more muted and slightly more opaque areas, which I can get by dissolving neocolors. Anyway, when I will be adding water, sometimes I will be dropping some paints grey into neocolor background. I will be using my favorite brush, Quill Brush by Jackson's Art. I work without preparing paper with any kind of gesso. Paper in this book is quite uh, nice, so I can work with any water-based mediums like watercolors, like neocolors, without um, any bleeding through problems. The only thing I do, I protect the rest of my book by putting sheet of paper under my page.
while the background, pigment and paint are still wet, I do those vertical brush strokes to imitate rain. The next medium which I want to use is Derwent Graffiti in Pencils. I want to color hair of my Storm Lady in grey colors and if you need interesting beautiful grey colors then you definitely need Derwent Graffiti in Set. If you are not familiar with these pencils they are really very interesting. If you color with these pencils on the paper you will get dark grey colors with light additional addition of other colors so it could be grey with a little bit of blue or grey with a little bit of green grey with a little bit of uh, violet but all colors will be really dark but when you take pigment directly from the pencil core with wet brush you will get very bright very clean and very light pigment and I will be using this trick for my picture. First I selected dark indigo and juniper colors. I highly recommend you, if you don't want to purchase the whole set, these two pencils will be very helpful. I think that probably they are among the most beautiful in the set. I color with dark indigo both sides of each uh, hair strand and I put specially dark color where hair strands are intersected. I leave central part uncolored. Then I add a little bit of juniper also to the sides of each strand and then when I need to apply water first I touch with my wet brush core of the dark indigo pencil so I get bright blue color and I put it to the central part. In this way central part is bright, bright blue or bright violet and then I move my brush to the sides to the darker color. So in this way I can get nice uh, color gradient from bright blue to dark blue. And Juniper pencil provides me with beautiful violet color.
Here I try to show you better how first I touch pencil core with wet brush and with this pale blue color I color the central part of the strand of hair and then with wet brush I start to dissolve graphite which I already put on the paper. In this way I got nice gradient from pale blue to dark blue. I let my picture dry completely and now I want to work on contrasts, I want to increase them and I also want to smooth uh, some areas to work on color transitions and color gradients. My next medium will be Darren drawing pencils. I selected ink blue and smoke blue to work on the blue areas and Mars violet for the violet area. Next I planned to work on the sea area, but as I want to draw some stormy waves, which will be partly covering those 
islands or stones, first I need to color them. And I decided to use the same Derwent drawing pencils. In the base of each stone I will put dark indigo and in the central part Mars violet. I hadn't decided yet about uh, the rest of the um, composition. If I want to do it as a snowy picture or maybe it will be more rainy one. So I hadn't decided for the color of the upper part of each stone. So I left it uncolored. For now I only need to color the bottom part which will be covered by stormy waves. It's time to use some acrylic paint. I use my Aldi synthetic brushes. I use big flat brush for the bigger areas and later I will switch to smaller one to draw waves. First I use paints gray with a little bit of turquoise colors. I love to work with acrylic paint because Paint dries very quickly, so I don't have to wait. When I was finishing to color the left side of the sea, the right side was already dried completely, so I was able to start drawing smaller waves. For the smaller waves I decided to switch to acrylic gouache paint, which is completely opaque. I selected Prussian blue, Viridian and I added a little bit of white paint and it helped me to get beautiful turquoise, bluish, greenish colors, it depends from the mix. And I simply indicated some smaller waves. I am not good at all at drawing sea waves or something like this, so I simply did very simple shapes and I hoped that after I will add some form to the upper part of each wave, in the end it will resemble the real waves and real sea.
when I selected paints for the sea, apart from the colors which I wanted to use, I also tried to pay attention to the opacity. We can get information about opacity from the package and I wanted to use indigo first because I really love indigo color, but it was semi-transparent and in the end I decided to use paints gray instead, which is completely opaque and I needed to cover some black lines on the sea. Also, I have this beautiful Prussian blue color by Amsterdam acrylic, but you can see that it's completely transparent, so it won't provide me with this dark and rich blue color which I needed for the sea. Acrylic gouache paints are completely opaque, so you can use any colors, they are never transparent, instead you add a lot of water to them. Next, I decided to work a little bit more on her hair. As her hair represents stormy clouds, I wanted them to have softer shapes. So, I used a white gouache paint, which is quite opaque. I used titanium white, but I diluted it with water to get semi-transparent effect. It always provides me with beautiful misty effect. Titanium white by itself is quite bright white, but here I applied on top of the Derwent Graffiti layer, which is water soluble, so when I apply paint with wet brush, pigment of white gouache starts to mix with pigment of Derwent Graffiti, so I got not bright white, but slightly bluish color. If I would color first layer her hair with Derwent Inktense, which are permanent after drying, I would get brighter white. So you need to know all properties of all your mediums, which are permanent, which are water soluble, and to think about how different mediums could be combined. Finally, I decided to work with colored pencils. For the trees and brushes, I will be using Prismacolor Slate Gray for bases of leaves. Then, for the tips of leaves, I will be using Bright Light Cerulean Blue. And for the tree trunks and for some parts of the trees, I will be using Polychromos Dark Indigo. It's uh, considerably darker comparing to Prismacolor Indigo, so it's one of my must-have pencils. Polychromos Dark Indigo is very helpful for shading, but also it's very beautiful by itself.
I haven't decided yet. Is my storm lady is more rain lady or snow lady? According to the picture, it's more um, rainy one. But according to the winter season, maybe I want to transform the whole picture into winter one. I haven't decided yet and I will think until the second part. In any case, I decided to outline all bushes and all trees with white Posca. I really enjoyed mixing different mediums. It was quite fun and I missed to work with several brands of my pencils or with my acrylic paints, so I greatly enjoyed the process. In the second video we will be coloring mostly with pencils, but I hope that it still will be interesting. So I hope to see you in the second part.